Hi, hunters. Thank you for tuning into the Flushman Dustin podcast brought to you by Nick and Tyler, the boys from Ringnecks and Retrievers. In this podcast, we will talk about guns, dogs, gear, and our successes and failures in the field through our combined 40 years of experience. We speak with hunters just like you from across the nation about their days in the field and the many memories they built with their friends and family. We are excited to have you listen. Now let's get to Flushman and Dustin. Got Nick and Tyler here with Ringnecks and Retrievers, and we have a special guest tonight, Will Larson from Colorado. He uh, runs Britney's, and we're just going to get into it. Uh, Will, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then kind of how you got into training Britney's. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Happy to uh, to join you here. Um, yeah, a little bit about myself. Um, my wife and I uh, grew up in Chicago and moved out to Colorado uh, about five five years ago now. So coming up on five years, we have five kiddos, uh, nice. oldest eight, young, yes, youngest are uh, 11 month old twins. So we are a uh, full house here. I got uh, one three year old Brittany, and then we have another Brit on the way in 12 days. So we're very excited about that. Nice. How you uh, get started? Yeah. So you got Upland Brits on Instagram, right? Um, yeah. Can you tell us about that, how that came about? Uh, sure. How you establish that yeah totally so, honestly it, it kind of started as an innocent thing well, once we got engaged so gage is our, our three-year-old right now and we got him and everyone was kind of starting these accounts for their dogs and we're like all right let's start an account for our dogs so um <laughs> just kind of posting puppy pictures and <laughs> just kind of having fun with it my wife was posting stuff all the time and then as yeah just kind of as things evolved and i started hunting more and getting really into the dog training and, and bird dogs um, it kind of just started taking off and I started getting more serious about, you know, hunting and dogs and all that. And, uh, yeah, it just kind of, it grew and grew and, um, it's been, it's been fun to kind of, uh, yeah, just capture my experience with, with hunting and dog training through that account. Yeah. It, um, so you talk about dog training, obviously we weren't run, uh, retrievers, so the, sure. we're not too familiar with, um, how you train, you know, how do you train your dogs? What's kind of the process that you maybe learn from? Uh, you know, someone that's yeah. kind of just getting started that maybe is running a Brittany that is looking into, you know, how can I train, maybe give some insights into that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And and I'm by no means, I'm no, no means an expert at all. I'm, uh, I really only started hunting. I was probably a little after 20 years old, I started hunting yeah. a little bit on and off. And then I gauge is my first bird dog. So I'm still learning, which is kind of fun too. It's like, you're yeah. still in that new phase, like, asking a bunch of questions and learning from people. So that's, it's a really fun process. Uh, I think that's why I'm getting another dog too, because I kind of missed that. <laughs> I missed the puppy phase. Oh, for sure. <laughs> as as weird as that sounds, but um, yeah. So it, one of the biggest things that's probably most helpful, and even for someone someone new getting into it, um, I was lucky enough. So uh, my dogs, uh, the guy who owns my dog's dad, his name's Jeff. He's been a really good mentor for me. Um, and if uh, I would just encourage people, if you can find someone like that. Oh, um, for sure. It, it's been super helpful. Um, one, I get to learn kind of hands-on and, you know, he's super good about just giving pointers and uh, really on the, the bird work stuff. Um, a lot of the other kind of training, you know, things, uh, I start pups with clicker training when they're pretty young. Okay. So on woe conditioning, um, hear, heal, all those things that I'm really using the clicker for a lot. Um, I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> Yeah, oh, for as sure. Fun as that is, there's, there's a ton of good stuff out there. Um, I think Standing Stone Kennels, they have some really good stuff. Yeah, cool so a lot of that, that house stuff I learn on myself uh, just at home. Yep. And then a lot of like the bird work and kind of stuff out in the field. Uh, that's where that uh, my buddy Jeff is really coming to play. Um, he's a little bit older. He runs, runs Brits. Um, he's pretty big in the field trial uh, circuit. Um, not much difference there as far as training goes, but, um, just having someone like that to get out in the field, you work, work the dogs on some uh, pigeons, quail, things yep. like that's been super helpful. So. Absolutely. I know I, you know, I, back when I had, uh, before diesel, I had Jackson and I had a mentor just like that. His name's uh, Brian Sorensen. He actually okay. was a dog trainer. And so he was my high oh, school, nice. bas- he was my high school basketball coach as well. And a yeah. teacher there. So I just kind of like. Hey, what do I do here? What do I do here? So yeah. I, completely, I completely get that. Completely yeah, understand totally, that. Totally. Yeah. One of the things I'm looking forward to with this next pup, I think with our, my first dog, you know, he's my first bird dog. And I think I was in such a rush in that first year of life. I, I felt like I was going to screw him up. 
yeah. I felt like I was behind on things. There was, there was just like this constant urgency Yep. that this time around, I'm like, I'm going to enjoy it a little bit more and let the dog develop as he develops. Like let, let a puppy be a puppy. Too. Absolutely. Um, you know, and so I'm kind of looking forward to that. The round two this time. Yeah. You know, and back to what you say, we're by no means professionals either. We just <laughs> right. enjoy, we just enjoy yeah. the, the, the game. We enjoy the hunt. We enjoy the chase. And just like totally. you, we enjoy that, that, that puppy phase and, and figuring all that kind of stuff out. So yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. And what kind of, what got you into bird hunting? I know you said this, Brittany, the one uh, gauge, right? Is your yeah. one. So did yeah. you, did you get into bird hunting, hunting before getting gauge or was it kind of like, Hey, I'm interested in this, you know, I'm going to get gauge and then see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so my dad, my dad hunted a little bit here and there, uh, growing up, not, he wasn't super into hunting. I actually started uh, waterfall hunting with my uncle. Um, I was probably like late teens. And yep. so I, I did that for a while, really enjoyed it. Um, ton of fun. He, uh, yeah, taught me a lot and we had a really good time out there. And then it wasn't until later, like I was already married at the time. My dad randomly joined a hunt club. Okay. Um, this is back in, back in Illinois. And it's like, Hey, I've joined this you know, hunt club or preserve, whatever you want to call it. I'm like, all right. And so we started hunting a bunch out there together and did, neither did of us have, had dogs. You didn't have dogs. Okay, no, no, question. we did not have okay. dogs at the time. So um, the cool thing, so the club has like guides they'll, they'll pair you with. So we book a yep. guide. His name was Bill and Bill, he ran uh, Brittany's. And so that was my, my first experience. I'm out in the field, never hunted upland birds before. Uh, meet this guy, Bill. He's got two Brits. I'm like, this is cool. And I just remember that first hunt. I, I was so mesmerized, mesmerized just by the watching the dogs work. Um, that was the coolest part. And yeah. I think that's probably what I enjoy most about even hunting. It's just Thank oh, watching sure. these, watching these dogs just do what they're naturally bred to do. Yeah. Um, so I, I was just hooked from day one. And so we hunted a bunch with them. Um, those two dogs. Funny enough, the first dog I ever shot my bird over was named Gage. And so that's why <laughs> so I named my, uh, my first bird dog Gage, but um, yeah, I have a ton of great memories. And so that's kind of where my, yeah, I guess where my, my passion started to uh, develop. Then my wife and I moved out to Colorado and I didn't hunt for a long time. Um, I ducked kind of a little bit in, uh, in Eastern Colorado here a little bit. Um, but then, yeah, we got some random email from uh, some people we knew that they had Brittany puppies available. And in the back of my mind, I was new. I, I, if I got a, another dog, um, yeah. it'd be a Brittany. Yeah. Showed the wife and it was kind of like the moment of truth. I was kind of waiting for her, <laughs> waiting for her response. And uh, yeah, so we got Gage and uh, the rest is kind of history there. Nice. Uh, what, blessing. Yeah. What's the, yeah, <laughs> totally. What's the bird population out in Colorado? Cause when I think of Colorado, I'm thinking elk. <laughs> I'm not thinking, yeah, pheasant, totally. you know, so, totally. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of the minority here. I, uh, I'm just yeah. starting to get into a little bit of big game here and there. Yep. Um, but again, mainly, mainly upland honey is my passion. So yeah, elk is the big thing here and mule deer actually. Oh, um, yeah. but surprisingly, yeah, I mean, bird numbers are, are good. I mean, I, I, I could say every time I've gone out, I find birds, I see birds. Um, yeah. I'd say 90% is going to be pheasants. Yep. Um, there's a very, very small population. We have some scale quail way down like, uh, Southeast Colorado. Okay. And then uh, the pheasants and some bob whites uh, will be up in like the north northeast corner. Are you so right? I, in, I think they're pretty good. Are you right by Denver then? Yeah, we're just south of Denver. So it's okay. so it's, yeah. for me to get on some birds, it's a good two and a half, maybe. Okay. Yeah, probably two and a half hours. I mean, that's not much different from us, I would say. I mean, we got some spots around Des Moines, but usually if I want to go anywhere, it's an hour and a half for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. the spots that Tyler and I, we found a couple good ones last year that are western iowa and so tyler has to drive two hours to get to me and then we oh. meet up and then he, we got to ride another two <laughs> you keep hours going yeah okay yeah. <laughs> gotcha gotcha well, it's That's cool the traveling's not yeah out. oh yeah last year i did uh uh i hunted nebraska for the first time and uh that really piqued my interest um ton of great like walking access land nice. um, just re every every field i hit was like lush grass um, had saw tons of birds. Didn't shoot a Nebraska bird though last year, which I was a little bummed about. I had a, I had a couple good misses, but uh, but yeah, so I'm super excited to get back to camp, uh, Nebraska this year. And then yeah. I'm, I'm still debating between a couple other states I'm, I want to try to hit. Nice. So this will be our fourth, fourth year, third year, fourth year, fourth third year, year. Uh, going to South Dakota. 
Um, oh, nice. You know, first year was pretty much shit. Um, <laughs> didn't didn't <laughs> do well at all. Uh, last year was um, last year was pretty good. We ended up buying new guns right before we went out and never shot them. Oh, we nice. got out there and we couldn't hit anything with them. <laughs> so I recommend not doing that. Nice. Yeah, and, that's, uh, that's probably smart. Yeah. That's so smart. then we finally bust out our old faithfuls, and then we started knocking yeah. birds down. It's always, it's always a little faithful that, that get done. It is. So yeah. not to switch subjects, but no. I see you got your gun safe right behind you. Oh yeah. So yeah. what what are you shooting? Um. So what's your, I. What's your gun of choice? Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a big 20 gauge fan. Oh yeah. Uh, love a 20 gauge. So I actually just picked up uh, a Franke Instinct. Okay. Uh, a couple months ago, so I, I've gotten it out shooting a little bit. Um, nice. so it's my first, my first over under. Never, uh, never hunted with an over under before. Oh. Um, if that goes south, I'll switch to my. Uh, I have a Benelli Montefeltro, uh, twelve oh. gauge. Nice. Um, so yeah. So yeah, those are my two upland guns, and I have one. Uh, uh, what is it? It's a, it's a pump action waterfall gun. Yep. Another Benelli. So yeah. So yeah. Those are my uh, my guns of choice. Branchy, uh... Does that have the like the ejector when you open up the when you it open w- it up shooting it ejects? Yeah, it will. Yeah, it will eject. And yeah, that's what I was probably most excited for that. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tyler had uh, a Stoger five five five. Yeah. Okay, my buddy yeah. has one of those. And yeah, guy pissed me off. I'd shoot and you have to open it up and you have to pull each shell out. Oh, okay. And, you know, you're kind of wasting time doing that instead of it kind of popping yeah. out. So they're nice. I'm, uh, yeah. Oh, totally. I'm you never, very familiar I don't, now. I don't think the, you ever uh, got a bird with that gun either, so. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, always that, it's always that first bird you want to hit with your gun. It gives you a little confidence. Yeah. Yes. No, my, uh, my, my first experience with the over-under, we were out, uh, we are working dogs a couple weeks ago with a buddy of mine. Um, actually, I have two buddies that own litter mates of Gage. So we, we go okay. out and work dogs all the time. Very cool. And so we went to this hunt club. We bought a couple pigeons and, uh, so my buddy Jake, he was working his dog on a, on a bird he bought. I go up there with the over under, broke over my shoulder, and get up there. Bird flushes. I go to shoot, and I didn't. Again, first time with an over under, I didn't realize that the shells will fall out <laughs> if you have it broke open like that. So, so I go to shoot this bird. Pull the trigger once, nothing. Pull the trigger twice, nothing. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, that sounds that bird sounds familiar down. to me. So, it was That's a good lesson. Funny. Sounds real familiar to me. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we, that was our first year in South Dakota. That explained how our year went. Yeah, first year South Dakota. We oh. weren't seeing any birds. And it was kind of, it was like the second to last day we were there. So I'm kind of an antsy person. I like to get going. Yeah. Tyler, I, I don't know. He was, yeah. he was messing around. and wouldn't, He was, wouldn't get shit going. I was like, let's fucking go. Come on. So <laughs> we get out to the field and Rooster Diesel kicks it up right in front of me. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Didn't even load my gun. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was yeah, that man. was the last day I hunted in South Dakota. I turned around and came home. Yeah. Like we didn't even stay. I said, <laughs> I'm, like, going I'm, home. Done. I'm done. I'm done. Going back to Iowa. Yep. How does, That's uh, awesome. How does a hunt club? So I don't know in Iowa. I've never heard of like a hunt club here. They might have them. We have um, preserves where you can like buy, you know, X amount of birds, and then you can only sure. hunt them. Uh, what is it? September through. March thirtieth, I think it is. Something like that. Yeah. So how does a, yeah, a how does a hunt club work? I I think it's just a term I grew up on. It sounds like the same thing. Okay. Um, so same deal. They their hunting season is open up from yes yeah, September to end of March. You buy birds. Um, I think it's kind of what we what we call them back in Illinois, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably, probably using that term. So yeah. So it's been it's actually been really good having young dogs, especially. Um, it's been nice just having access to birds. <laughs> Um, even though they're, they're pen rays, I know there's some some people don't like pen raised birds, but you know, um, I, gets I, 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 I know, I, so I think it's good, I like it. It is good, so not to interrupt you, but I got called yeah. out because I, I go to a lot of them, like so. Mm-hmm. I'll start going here in September in Iowa, yeah, and I'll go three or four times before season starts just to get dog yeah. warmed up, get them in shape, you know, get them back totally. in there. And uh, I hunted a field a couple years ago with my sister's boyfriend, and we ended up limiting out yeah in an hour and a half right and this guy comes to me and he's like man i had some of the best dogs come through here pointers and retrievers and you name it they've been through here and they always lose birds how many did you guys lose i said we didn't lose any he goes no you're shitting me and the guy had two yeah. i mean i i never yeah. there's over 100 birds that we saw in this yeah. little field 
And I said, we didn't lose any. And he goes, yeah, well, don't you do that pin race shit? And I was like, well, yeah, but I'm like, I actually think it yeah. probably worked to my advantage because he's used yeah. to being in a field where there's tons of scent, right? Totally. So, like, that's my mind. That's, like, great. my thought yeah. process. And I'm, I'm like, right with you. I'm right with I you. Know. I think I'm it's like, great experience, one, for myself and also the dog, just getting them out there. I'm um, sure the birds might hold a little tighter, but, I mean, I've had no problem with my dog, you know, being steady and, and running up those wild yeah. birds as well. I mean, if you're not getting your dog on any birds and you're just hunting them once or you're just hunting yeah. them regular season with those birds, I'll take my dog 10 out of 10 times over your dog. Sure. <laughs> your dog's getting, <laughs> yeah. your dog's getting totally. one or two wild birds the time you go out, maybe three right. if you're having a really good day. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But the other times, there's days we go out, we don't even get a bird. So, sure. There's, yeah, you know, plenty you get, of times. That, yeah. yeah, you get 10 or 15 birds in a year where you take, I take diesel and you're taking Gage out to these farms and Tyler's taking his dogs out to these farms. They're getting on 20, 30, 40 birds before you even get exactly. to a, a field. So, I think it's, yeah. I, I agree. I think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I know you, you said you're getting a, a new pup. So, can you yeah. explain that process of, you know, did, did, did you search around for a kennel? Uh, did you have a few in mind how you kind of settled on where you're getting your pup from? And then you know, are you going to have it trained at all by them? Or are you going to do it all yourself? Or how's that process? Sure, sure. Let's start with, yeah, so, let's start, Will, not to interrupt you, let's start with this. How do you go about picking out your pup? Like, I want to know that process too. Like, yeah, what decides yeah, you to pick out that, that pup? So then, sorry to. No, you're good. Just curious. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this, well, first off, I knew I wanted another Brittany. So that was yep. kind of my yep. narrow, narrow down my, uh, my focus a little bit. Um, did a little research online and we weren't even in the market right away. We were kind of like, Hey, let's start looking. Um, I had, again, I had to do some convincing with the wife again, <laughs> go for round two. Um, let's just start looking seeing what's out there. Kind of what, what kind of dog we want. And came across, uh, it's a kennel out by you guys, Trinity kennels or Trinity Bre- uh, Bretons. Um, oh. So they, they breed French Britneys. So it's, mm-hmm. it's okay. slightly different. Um, so anyways, I got connected with them and just picked up the phone and just called the breeder. I was like, I want to hear about your dogs. I want to hear how they work. I want to hear all about them. Um, also heard them on, they were on a podcast, uh, the Project Upland podcast, uh, I think early January or something like that. Okay. So kind of heard them on there. I was like, all right, let's get more info. So called him and really it was like, hey, here's, here's the kind of hunting I do. Like, Here's the kind of dog I'm looking for. Here's what my current dog's like. And so there's a lot of conversation just back and forth on, I don't just want to close my eyes and be like, hey, I want a Brittany, just give me, give me any dog. I really want a, a closer working dog. Um, majority of my hunting is going to be pheasants, quail, you know, sharp tails, things like that. Um, so I didn't want a big, big ranging dog. And so, so after talking with the breeder, he was, I mean, just so knowledgeable and just really helped him pare down. Hey, like you, you definitely would not want, you know, X, Y, and Z, you know, parents. Um, but if we do this combo, that would be a really good combo for you. So they weren't even sure kind of on the, the, the breeding timeline yet with this, this one pairing that I was looking at. And I was like, all right, well, if that pairing comes up, let me know. And I'd be happy to, to, uh, yeah. to maybe grab a pup. And so sure enough, it was uh, not too long after that, he called me up and said, uh, hey, we got uh, this litter on the way. And um, so just knowing the parents really and kind of the, the hunting style I was looking for, the birds I hunt, um, I was really just kind of after those lines, and th- those parents. And once they had a pup, um, yeah. And then I wanted a male as well. So yep. once the male was there, I, uh, I snagged him. Um. Tell me a little bit about Britneys and how they hunt. So I've never hunted over a Britney. Yeah. Um, sure. Obviously, I've seen them. Uh, they're they point, um, mm-hmm. but that's really all I know. Are they are they rangy? Yeah. Like I, you just said that you wanted to keep them in close. Yeah. So I'm assuming yeah. you can. Are they really high energy yeah. dogs? I mean, I don't really know. So yeah. So no, those are those are really good points. So uh, rangy, I would. I think Britneys are, are they're a considered a versatile pointy breed. Um, yep. they're, they're definitely the smallest pointy breed. So all the Britneys I've hunted over, um, have been mid to close ranging working dogs. And that's perfect yeah. and perfect for the cover for the birds that we hunt. Um, so my dogs, uh, gauges dad's side, um, again, it's a field trial line. So the field trial line typically will range out a lot further. Um, and then they'll kind of have to reel those dogs back in. It's just kind of, for, for the field trial game that they're doing, they 
they're working huge country and they want big ranging dogs. Yep. So I kind of got lucky with Gage and just that he really does work pretty darn close. Um, really in a sweet spot that I like. I've never really had to push him out. I rarely have to have to pull him back in, which has been nice. So I would say they're, they're really versatile. Depends on kind of the line you're looking at. If you want a big country, big ranging dog, then that's kind of what, you know, a puppy you want to look for. But um, what was the second part? I forget. Um, Just they're uh, like, are, are, are they, yeah, are they high oh, energy? Yeah. Are they, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, they're so, easy to train? Um, yeah. I guess, so why, off, did you go with a, why did you go with a male over a female? I mean, those. Yeah, so yeah. off switch is a big thing for me. Um, again, I didn't know this with Gage. Gage was like, hey, give me a Brittany. I want a Brittany. <laughs> That's kind of all I knew. The second round, I'm kind of a lot more picky, a lot more knowledgeable in kind of what we were looking for. So off switch was huge. And that's something I talked with the breeder about is, because um, again, going back to Gage real quick, he, he goes in the house and he is a couch cuddler, lays on your lap, super chill. Um, he does a little counter surfing. So my wife isn't super happy about that. <laughs> looking for food, but overall he's he's been a fantastic just family pet as well yeah but then you take him on the field and it's lights out go all day hunt all day um super hard working dog that's, that's um, exactly how so diesel like, is he's a great yeah uh, he's a and great was I don't, really important i don't know if you saw any of the the video i just posted this week but my daughter was sitting there playing with his lip and poking his teeth oh yeah yeah <laughs> he's, just, he's just laying there so yeah i mean that's yeah, super important totally. to me too no, it's what you need. I mean, it's not, he's not just living outside all day. He's a family pet as well. So, um, yeah, so I definitely wanted to kind of a, to replicate that with him. I want, you know, the next pup yep. we're looking at, um, want a dog that can come in the house, but then go lights out in the field as well. So that was important. And then again, hearing, uh, for this new pup, uh, hearing, you know, his, his breeding, his mom, his dad, um, that's their temperament demeanor really lined up with what we we're looking for. Nice. nice. So, yeah, nice. so they're, they're really hard workers though. He'll, uh, I had him out, I think it was last year. I think it was last year, first two days of hunting. We run a GPS collar on him. And I think in two days of hunting, he did like 28 miles. Oh, wow. And my only, you know, maybe 10 miles, something like that, I walked. <laughs> and so these dogs will go and go and go. Yeah. And then they'll they'll crash later. <laughs> but they nice. won't give up. That's awesome. so, yeah. Nice. Do they, really uh, cool. I, run, I have Goldens, so I know the long hair sometimes. Oh, nice. I, I grew up with Goldens. Nice. Uh, do yeah. you have any issues with burrs and stuff? Do you have any tips on how you clean those out, or is it kind of clean out in Colorado? Where you don't have I haven't, haven't really had any problem with burrs. Uh, the big thing we have um, is like cactus with the, the thorns. Okay. Um, so he'll get those in his pads all the time. Um, so every It depends on the field you're hitting. Um, Nebraska, I didn't really have any problems with those. Um, but some spots in Colorado, he'll stop every couple minutes and he'll just stand there and you just go over, you know, you know, he's got something in his, in his pads. Yeah. What, uh, so. what draws you to, you know, like we go to South Dakota every year, you know, it's kind of just something that we've started. You know, you mentioned that you want to get back to Nebraska. Do you have, no. is there a preference of why you pick Nebraska over, you know, maybe Kansas or North or South Dakota or what have you learned about no. Nebraska that? kind of like yeah now i mean i want to go back to, to all the all the bird states i want to hit kansas nebraska the dakotas yeah uh, minnesota so it's yeah. with, with five kids right now i'm trying to narrow down where i want to hit yeah um i think realistically this year I'll, I'll definitely be able to do a little bit of colorado nebraska and then i'm trying to pick between one other state i'm, I'm trying to pick south or north dakota um yeah. or kansas as well and uh i, I mean just being in bird cover there. Nebraska, I don't know, Nebraska's a must. I, I love the mixed bag opportunities there. Um, you, don't, you don't have to drive super far and you can hit uh, some quail, um, which are mu much better population than Colorado. Um, also, so they have a, a way better the west, sharp, sharp tail. Do you just stay yeah, on the west, western yeah, side, west of side of Nebraska? Nebraska. Or do you, okay. Yeah. Okay. This year, I'll probably go yeah, a little so bit wait. closer, a little south, like near the Kansas border. Um, yep. that's where I've, I've kind of heard a uh, better quail population, kind of a long, I think it's like the Platte River yeah. down there. Nice. Do you so, usually go by yourself? Do you bring a friend with you or just you and the dog? Um, yeah, I would say most of my hunting, um, yeah, vast majority is solo, just me and the dog. Um, really enjoy just, you know, just getting out there, just me and the dog. It's kind of an introvert, so it's kind of, it fills my tank <laughs> just being yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely a few trips each year. I'll do with some buddies. Um, again, two, again, like I said, two of my buddies have, have litter mates of gauge. So 
um, we're all we're all pretty close and, and love getting out there together. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, are you hunting all all public land then, private land? What do you have in Colorado? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I've never hunted a uh, private land before. Um, only hunted public. Um, I, I just I love the opportunity that public land gives. Just anyone can go do it. Um, you don't need to know somebody. You don't need to have connections. Um, it kind of kind of bugs me. There's some great way to look uh, at it. Some people, yeah. I mean, there's some people that'll they'll just be like, oh, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go to South Dakota unless we have land connection. I'm like, well, there's how many millions of acres <laughs> that are yeah. like you know accessible, and I love the challenge. So it's it's pretty I mean, much all public. I I did knock on one door last year in I think it was in Colorado. I knocked on one door. A buddy challenged me. He's like, all right, I want you to knock on one door. Just ask permission at one time. And right before that, I saw probably 30 or 40 pheasants flying to his field. So I drove up his road, get, getting out of the truck, and I'm like super nervous. I'm like, oh, crap. Like, what's he going to say? Like, never knocked on a door before. And uh, he was outside kind of working around his farm. And uh, I asked him, I was like, hey, you know, saw some birds, you know, come over your field. Would you mind if I, uh, I hunted it? And he was super cool. He was like, oh, probably not this year, but, you know, check back next year maybe. You know, I get a lot of requests and stuff. So he was super cool. No big deal. You know, again, wasn't able to hunt it, but um, I tried. <laughs> so I, I felt good yeah. about that. Yeah. We, we, uh, we knocked on a door out in South Dakota. Last year we didn't. Last year we just stuck to the, uh, the public ground game. But yeah. uh, we knocked a couple years ago, and they said, yeah, we'll let you hunt it, but it's going to be $100 a gun and 25 bucks oh. a bird. I was like, right. what? I was like, nah, I'm good. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see you next time. See ya. Yeah, I can, I can go pay for that back in Iowa. I'm not coming here to, yep. to do that for some exactly. wild birds. Sorry. So, Dang. Yeah, we, we moved. Yeah. Well, there was, I don't know, we probably saw 100 birds flying in the field. Yeah. That's not even an exaggeration. They just were flocking in. I was like, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> totally. So, and I don't even know. Probably would never got one. They were probably pretty spooky. I mean, they were flying all over the place. Sure. You see them. Sure. <laughs> So give give us a give us a couple of your favorite stories hunting. Oh yeah, let us, um, let us know a couple of your favorite ones. <laughs> Dive into it. Um, I'll probably say I'll, I'll give you two. Um, so first first year hunting wild birds. Um, so went out with uh, Eastern Colorado. Uh, we had uh, myself, my buddy, and his wife, and then my other buddy. Again, all yep. the ones who have the litter mates engaged. Eastern Colorado, we're super excited. The pups are pups are just over a year, so this is their first season. They're pretty young still, so we're excited. We scouted the day before um, for the opener of Colorado, and I uh, found this field that you know we saw some birds fly in. So like, all right, we're gonna hit that in the morning. So the morning, we're there like way before dark or way before sunrise, and we pull up. We see a car. We're like, okay, that's one car. We see another car. They're all parked alongside of the road. And again, this is all of our first year hunting wild birds. So we're all new, you know, new to this whole thing. And then once the sun starts to come up, we're parked on the side of the road waiting for the, uh, waiting for legal shooting time. And it's three, three sections of fields that are kind of put together. It's all public ground. And once the sun rises, cars are just surrounding the whole entire fields on all sides. Oh, kind of frustrates you a little like, bit, doesn't it? Oh, well, it was, it was frustrating, but it was also exciting because we're like, they must something, they don't, they must know something we don't know. <laughs> so yeah. like, there's got to be birds here. So we were just excited to get birds. Like, again, we're, we're just like so eager, ready to get out there. So we're like right before shooting time, everyone's just lining, <laughs> lining the field, just ready to start walking in. And uh, so shooting time comes, we start marching in and birds just start popping up left and right. Hens, roosters, you name it. It's just popping up. Gunshots are going off. Like it's like a war zone. So we're walking in a line, a buddy of mine, he's kind of lagging behind us. And <laughs> we're like, Hey, you come in again. This is like, it's super chaotic right now. And he's like, Oh, he's looking at his GPS. He's like, Oh, my, my dog ran off. I'm like, well, where is he? He's like, Oh, he's, he says he's two miles the opposite direction. Oh. Already. We're like, what? <laughs> so he's like, just keep going. And again, this is all while like shots are going off. Birds are flying. So we keep going. Uh, my other buddy, they kind of veer off, do their thing. I keep marching straight, trying to keep track of my dog. We get to a, the end of this first field, and it's a corner, and there's a hunter on the corner by a tree facing us, 
shooting the birds that we're flushing towards it. <laughs> so this, this is a, and I, I say all this, it's, it was crazy and chaotic, but it was just the first wild bird hunting experience. Um, it's super memorable. And we had a, I mean, this was a great trip. Um, it kind of, we all joke, it gives us PTSD now, like just thinking about how chaotic it was. Oh, but he, he did yeah. get his dog back finally. Oh, he didn't good. even hunt that, that whole field. Um, but in, the, in that first walk, I did get my first wild bird with Gage. So we kept going, you know, pretty deep in. Um, after we passed the guy shooting towards us, we, uh, we finally were able to, to bag one bird. Um, so super exciting, you know, again, I'll walk first. So having that first, you know, first rooster in the bag with him oh, yeah. uh, was pretty special, but also chaotic. So it was, a, it was a little interesting. Nice. But, nice. Yeah. So the, uh, the other, uh, I guess, I guess it's the first, my, um, so I had a hunting trip scheduled back in Illinois to hunt with my dad two years ago now. Um, so my dad, uh, he, he had cancer and so this was kind of, that. uh, he, um, this would kind of be going to be our last trip, probably the last time I saw him. Um, so we had this, this whole trip scheduled. We we're going to hunt at his, his hunt club there. His health wasn't great. Um, but you know, we knew he didn't have, have a ton of time. So, um, I did a duck hunt in Eastern Colorado. It was like a Monday morning. And then left there and was going to drive back to Illinois with Gage. And so I just crossed the, uh, the Nebraska border and my grandma called uh, that my dad passed um, super, super unexpectedly. And I was just, yeah, I was just, as you can imagine, just rocked. Yeah. yeah so continue, continue to drive. And um, I got there, I think it was like late Tuesday. So that Wednesday morning, um, first thing I did, drove out to the hunt club. Uh, took Gage out there and just that that first bird I shot uh, you know after my dad's passing at, at his hunt club where him and I spent a lot of time together um, that's yep. that'll probably go down and probably my all-time favorite bird I've ever shot oh um, just it, yeah it just the whole thing the dog the the weather the field um, it, it just that was really special for me so it was a perfect it was a perfect morning perfect it day. was it, it really yeah. was I, I shot one bird that day and I was like I'm done like <laughs> that, that's all I needed to do and uh just kind of went back sat in the clubhouse and, and just kind of relaxed a little bit and just kind of processed everything but um yeah that was definitely a definitely a special one i remember yeah oh for sure yeah. just going through the so what uh for your for gauge what's been kind of you know someone obviously we touched on it a little earlier but What's something that you find might be the hardest for someone uh, just getting into Britney's or starting to train Britney's? What do you think is something that the hardest that they might have to overcome or focus on, or maybe something that you had to focus on the most with Gage and then that you think will help you with your next pub? Yeah, totally. Um, I, I'd probably say, I think I was just a little naive going into it. I kind of thought all dogs retrieved. <laughs> I was like, oh, sure. All the whole dogs retrieve naturally, right? Um, so that was something I learned with him is uh, I think one of his parents does retrieve pretty well, um, but the rest of his line doesn't. And I kind of learned that after the fact. And so it, it, it's a small thing, but for me, I, I really, it's just really appreciate having that dog bring a bird back. Oh, and so yeah. it's, something, it's, it's just something about it. It's, it's it is. completes it's, the experience, I feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it's like it really does. Sport of bringing the bird. And yeah, totally. Like, uh, yeah. When I started, you know, hunting pheasants, the, uh, the the guide we hunted with, Bill, you know, his dogs retrieved really well, and I'm not sure if he he uh, force broke them or not, but it was just I was kind of trying to replicate that experience as when I yep. first started. And so, anyways, I mean, that was just something that was eye opening to me, and so I did ended up uh, uh, force breaking to myself this summer, um, and he's doing pretty good now. So I've had him on some birds now and he's been doing really good, but I would just say to someone don't expect all dogs to retrieve. <laughs> some will, some will have it, some won't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the force breaking, it was, it was a cool experience. Um, it's kind of cool to do it myself and just see the progression um, over, over a few months. Tyler just did his dogs this, uh, this oh, year. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah this nice. winter, springtime. Oh, nice. was, uh, it's tough, you know, like, yeah, it's time consuming. It is. And uh, it's hard to not get frustrated because they, yeah. you start them up on a box and they, they're they holding it for 30 seconds, 45 seconds a minute. Yeah. Like, all right, we've done this for a week. And you're like, all right, now let's go yeah. to the ground. 
and yep. like they forget everything. Yeah, exactly. I, I had a couple of those. No, you know, it's, <laughs> but it's yeah, like you said, it you know some dogs they can get it fairly quickly, you know, a month or so, yep. and then some dogs it takes three to four months for them to to really, yep. you know, for, to force fetch or hold. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I think Diesel. Obviously, I paid for him to go to the trainer, but I think they told me it took him a good month and a half to almost two months. Yeah, he was stu- he was really stubborn. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some dogs get quicker, and he yeah, yeah he didn't he he's an al he's a big time alpha dog, so he doesn't want okay. you know he wants to do his own thing. So you got to keep yeah. you keep the pulse on him. So yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I, there was some uh, YouTube video I was watching right before I was going to begin force fetching him. And I was just going to go right to the, uh, basically the fetch part. And I, I found some video that talked about the hold conditioning first. Yeah. And I was so glad I found that because I feel that was, that was key just to really get them to hold it. And that laid the foundation, I feel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for sure. That's what I did too, was yeah. hold conditioning first. And then, yeah. Cause it's, if they're not holding it for a long period of time, they're never yeah. fetch part exactly yeah and once in a while even even now he'll be bringing something back and i can see he's about to drop it and i, I just give him hold hold yeah <laughs> just to kind of kind of remind him and it helps he'll, he'll keep it in so yeah. i always do that uh, when yeah. diesel may have a live bird in his mouth like he's really good at oh, bringing yeah. it all the way back and healing at my side but if he has a live bird and i think he could run off I, I always yell like hold hold don't drop yeah. that bird hold <laughs> totally it, don't drop know? it well, yeah. especially a rooster i mean i can just imagine you know one of those things flopping around and ready to take off yeah they actually last year i didn't get to see it but tyler saw it there's a rooster that landed on the bottom branch of a tree and diesel caught it in his mouth he said or, oh but, yeah yeah nice. so that's awesome and you guys both yeah. run goldens you said no i have a black lab oh black lab nice. yeah. yep i have yep. Goldens, so. goldens okay yeah. nice and so yeah we, awesome. we just you know uh really the the podcast and this just to give you a little background it's just our passion you know we're by yeah. no means experts but we've <laughs> hunted you know i've hunted with my dad god since i was probably eight years old i can remember squirrel hunting and walking in the fields sure. with him and then i got my first black lab at 13 so then we started pheasant hunting when i was 13 nice. and you know so 20 years of experience and a lot of failures probably more failures <laughs> and successes for sure but <laughs> sure. yeah we're just trying to give the it audience happens. you know what they want and you got you got yeah. unique dogs that obviously we don't know much about so we have a lot of different followers sure. coming to our page, so it's great that you can come on. Oh and yeah, give them that, no, you know, give them that message, fun. and let them know, like you know, you know, we we just love to hunt. We don't care what you use. Yeah, hunt. we just we just want to know what you're doing, how you're successful, and how other people can be successful. Definitely, definitely. I hunted behind a, a black lab one time, and it was a ton of fun. It was it's a different, it's a it's a quicker, it's a quicker experience with the the flushing and the birds. Um, yeah. it was a ton of it was a ton of fun though watching those dogs work and you can when they get birdie and you can tell they're about to to push a bird up it's that's super exciting yeah, no, it, it can it it is fun but it can also be a pain in the ass when a bird's running and sometimes <laughs> i can't get diesel or call off and i'm basically running through the damn field yep. so yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> don't don't flush don't flush them don't flush them yep yep <laughs> don't do it i uh, know yeah some of some yeah, of the birds I, out here especially in colorado we had uh the, we've had some wily birds just just kind of flushing really far out and you know it just depends if they're they're willing to play nice yeah yeah yep. Yep. Do, is, is there a lot of pressure in colorado do you feel like the there's a lot of, there's a lot of that one on that colorado? one field we hit <laughs> that one field we hit well, the first year the one, yeah yeah um yeah, but, uh, not, no, I, not, I feel in a ton i've i feel like in iowa it's dying down you know that's another reason I, you know we want to get I've people involved that. in conservation yeah. Uh, you know, just just bring awareness to uh, you know pheasants forever and quail forever and all that kind of yeah. stuff, and and get younger people back into it. You know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I feel Colorado hasn't been too bad with with the pressure. Um, again, I think the people around that time of year they're they're still focused on big game. Um, yep. So it's it, there's not a ton of pressure. Uh, it's it's again it's kind of an anomaly being a bird hunter here. It's like. Oh, you hunt? Oh, you hunt elk and stuff like that. Oh no, I go go chase pheasants. So like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> you kind of get judged a little about. bit. Yeah, yeah. you kind of get judged. Do they? Uh, what are the grasslands like out there? So Iowa, obviously, we have like the nice gold CRP and you know, wetland areas. But yeah. I guess I've never been really out to Colorado, uh, except like through the Rockies. So I've never seen what type of sure grasses 
do they have on public ground and yeah yeah well, i mean yeah there's a lot of the grass fields it's crp and it's i mean it's nice it's it's good thick cover um okay. it's that golden that golden grass um it's also a lot of uh like pastures um s very very small percentage is, is public though yeah. it's like that very yeah very uh as a spurs cover <laughs> Um, they also do uh, wheat stubble as well. Oh, nice. um, but the wheat stubble, it, it's a night and day difference between the wheat stubble in Colorado and Nebraska. So I think Nebraska, they, they pay the, whatever those programs are that, where the, the landowners are making, you know, making money for walk-in. Yeah. Yep. The landowners make a little bit more money for leaving the, the wheat stubble a little bit higher um, and not cutting it as low. Well, Colorado, they'll cut it super low. And so there's a ton of wheat stubble fields, but they're a couple inches thick. A couple inches high um but nebraska it's i mean it's like 12 18 inches high still um so it, it provides really good cover as, as well pretty fun to nice hunt. yeah that would be fun to hunt. we'll have to yeah make a trip to nebraska yeah. ourselves some point here yeah yeah no, maybe this year. year what what's the uh what's the license cost to hunt in nebraska no, nebraska i think with all the all the fees and stuff i think it's right at like 100 maybe 102 something like that okay so south dakota is about 130, I believe it is, okay. or 120, 130 after tax, yeah. roughly. I think, I think that's I think. like what Kansas is or something like that. Yeah. Is Nebraska four birds, or is that Kansas a day? Kansas is four, Nebraska is three. Okay. Yeah. Do they, can you start at eight o'clock in the morning in Nebraska, or is it 10? Or? Yep. Yeah, yeah, eight o'clock. Yeah, both Kansas and Nebraska are, are early time. So I think it's like 30 minutes before sunrise, something like that. I think South Dakota, is that the only one that has the, oh, the 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. start. That's crazy. crazy. That is you, it's nice because you, you can have a few of those coors the night before and not yeah that's true. True. true you can sleep in a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. yeah exactly but, have uh uh oh, i forgot what i was gonna say oh did you would you guys hunt like sharp tails in the morning then because i've heard some people they'll, they'll hunt like sharpies in the morning and then do pheasants or we no. never had yeah okay i mean it, they would be cool to hunt they're a cool bird uh we just never got into it you know and like I said, usually we kind of use that eight between eight to ten to try to yeah. scope out some fields and yeah, look that's good. You know, where we want to hunt. Maybe see a couple birds, you know, flying into a field or something. Or sure, a little scouting time. That yeah. extra time in the morning to really scout a couple fields that we'd want to hit for the day. So yeah, and it's worked out pretty well for us to do that. Well, Will, we appreciate you getting on the Flushman Dustin podcast with us. Yeah, uh, absolutely, We don't have anything guys. else. We would love to maybe in the future, if it works out, maybe we grab a hunt together. A yeah, day. maybe that'd be if awesome. you're coming back through Iowa to go to Illinois, let us know. Or yeah, definitely, you know, we can hook up, and we got some yeah. pretty solid public ground places here that I think we could pull That's a few awesome. birds off of. Oh, so. I bet. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll be in Iowa in uh, 12 days picking up this pup. So nice. Yeah, so, uh, is, is, is that in Des Moines? Uh, just to... south. Yeah, just south, south. of Des Moines. Yeah. Yeah, so awesome. I, think, uh, I think it's about a nine, like nine and a half hour drive, it says for me. So I'm <laughs> taking my uh, my three older kids. We're making a little uh, road trip out of it. So Nothing wrong with fun. that. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah, Exciting too. Yeah. Exciting. We're, we're super pumped. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we we'll keep us posted on the pup. Um, yeah, we'll do. Once you get going, maybe we'll have you on again and we can do a, little, uh, do a little introduction to the new guy and see right. how it's going. Yeah. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much. Right. It was great chatting yeah. with you guys. Thanks, thank Will. You. Appreciate right. it. Have, have, have a fantastic good night, man. You yeah, too. See ya.